I'm Anil Kumar. We'll review rate of change and I hope that will help all the students who are taking up calculus now. The question here is, the height of a ball in feet is given by y equals to 42 t minus 16 t square, where time t is in seconds. Find the average velocity for the time period beginning t equals to 2 and lasting for each of the following. So lasting for 0.1 seconds, 0 0.05 seconds, and 0 0.01 seconds, right? That's the question for you. You can pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now what we are given here is, is an equation which can give us the displacement, right? Change in position. And we are also given the time interval. Now velocity, the the average velocity, delta v, is actually equals to change in uh, distance, which is for us delta y over change in time. Right? So that is how we are going to find the average velocity. Now let's make uh, columns to make our job simple. So let me make, let me make a couple of columns. Let this be change in uh, time, and then we have change in distance and then we'll calculate the change in velocity, right? So what we'll have here is, let me just sketch a column here. Okay, so the question here is, find average velocity for the time period beginning t equals to two. So, so it is beginning this, so we have t1 is two for all, right? t1 is two for all. And lasting for, so change in time is given to us, which is this column, right? Change in time is this column. Then we have to find T2, incorporating this time, right? T2. And then once we have T2, then we can find change in distance, right? So that is to say, we have to find distance at 2 and distance at the new time T2, right? that is change in distance. Now since we have to find distance at 2 for all, it's a good idea to write down what is the value of y when t1 is 2, right? So we'll calculate that. So for t1 equals to 2, we'll calculate what is y. So what is y equals to? So y is equal to, we'll substitute 2 there. So we have 42 times 2 minus 16 times 2 square, right? This is what the value is. So let's use calculator. So we have 42 times 2 take away 16 times 2 square and that gives us 20. So so the distance at t1 that is 2 is 20. Correct? So we can write here uh, for each uh, value of y at t equals t1 equals to 2 right so we which is 20 so let me write 20 for each so it is given to us it is 20 we just calculate it for each now what we need to find here is the distance at t2 right after that interval so we'll find distance at t2 right which we'll figure out so once we have this figure we will have change in distance right so difference of these two is going to give us change in distance that is will give us delta y correct so we'll find delta y once we have delta y and delta t we can calculate the velocity is that okay then we'll calculate the average velocity let me say delta v right change in velocity or the average velocity right so i should write average velocity here anyway now in this question we are given that the change in time is 0 0.1 seconds this is 0 0.1 so the time 2 will be 2.1 just add them up if it is 0 0.05 this will be 2.05 it is 0 0.01 seconds then it is 2.01 so for that much of time we need to figure out what is the average velocity right so this is basically average velocity right 
Okay. Now, let us calculate T2 for this time. We'll use the same formula. Just substitute instead of time. We'll substitute the new time. 2.1, right, over here. So it is 42 times 2.1 minus 16 times 2.1 square. And that gives us, in decimals, 17.64. So this gives us 17.64. What we'll do is we'll round all our answers to two decimal places, okay? Now, 17.64 and 20. So what is the change in, in distance or displacement? It is this value minus 20. So let's take away 20 from it. So that gives us in decimals minus 2.36, 2.36. Change in velocity, I should write average velocity actually. I should write average velocity. I should not use the term delta. Let's say average velocity. Average velocity is change in distance over change in time. Change in distance is given to us. Change in time is 0.1. So multiplying by point, I mean dividing by 0.1 will make it move the decimal to one place. We get 23.6. So that becomes the velocity. The units will be in meters per second, right? So so the units are in meet in feet per second, right? Feet per second. So the units are feet per second. Okay. Feet per second is the unit. So likewise, we can calculate all other figures. So 2.01. Let's find the displacement, which is 42 times 2. Point, uh, now 0 0.05. 0 0.05 minus 16 times. 2.05 square equals to, in decimals, 18.86. Now that take away 20 will give us, in decimals, 1.14 negative. Okay. And then we are going to divide this by the, the change in time, which is 0 0.05. So divide by 0 0.05 gives us, in decimals, minus... 22.8 right we'll do the same for the third time which is 2.01 so 42 times 2.01 minus 16 times 2.01 square equals to that is uh, 0.78 rounded and from here we'll take away 20 that gives us negative uh, 0 0.22 negative right and we are going to divide this by 0 0.01 divide by 0 0.01 gives us in decimals minus 22.16 right so from this data you can see it is moving towards minus 22 right so so as we become closer and closer to 2 the average rate of change is moving towards 22, right? Do you see that part? So that is how we can also find instantaneous rate of change of velocity at 2. That's a different story, right? So, well, in this particular question, what we did was we found average velocity for the time period beginning 2 and lasting for each of the following times, right? So these are the average velocities for each. Now, it could be followed by another question. Let's say this was part A of the question and part B was estimate instantaneous velocity at t equals to 2, right? In that case, when we follow this pattern, we see that the average velocity is coming closer and closer to 22, right? So we could say that the instantaneous velocity will be approximately equal to minus 22 meters per second, right? So that is how, I'm sorry, feet per second in this case. The units are feet, right? So it is minus 22 feet per second. So as the, as the time interval decreases, the average velocity becomes 
closer and closer to instantaneous velocity. If we draw this graph, the secant represents the average velocity, the tangent represents the instantaneous velocity. So as this time interval decreases, secant becomes closer and closer. The slope of secant becomes closer and closer to that of the tangent and that's how we can estimate with this method instantaneous velocity also. I am Anil Kumar and I hope that helps. Thank you and all the best.